For the geriatric lower extremity, the stretcher foot, um, the patient has to be over 65 and they have to be unable to maneuver their foot or lower extremity. Um, the technologist is going to use cassette placement, tube angles, sponges. You're going to obtain still the three views of the foot, your AP, your oblique, and your lateral. Usually this type of patient, they'll most likely be on a stretcher. They'll present usually with some swelling, redness. They're possibly an infection of the foot, osteomyelitis, in abscess or open wound, recent surgery, complications from diabetes. They may be missing um, some toes potentially, um, post-surgery, something like that. Um, so I just want to go through a couple of your options here. So for AP foot. As always, you want to evaluate your patient. How movable are they? Do you think they can do um, a regular foot x-ray for you? Can you put the cassette on the stretcher? Can they bend their knee? Do you have to angle for the AP just as you normally would? Then you're just going to run it like a normal foot x-ray if they can move for you. If they um, can't angle their, if they can bend their foot slightly, um, if they can bend their knee, but their toes are still up off the board, what you're going to do here is find a small angle sponge to support underneath. That way their foot is flat to the board. If they're around like a 10 to 15 degree angle, for their, it's only up a small amount, you can shoot straight because we usually angle the tube 10 degrees. Um, some texts are 10 to 15 degrees for tube angle for foot. So you can shoot straight if they're only up a small amount because you're angling the part instead of the tube, something like that. Um, and then if they can't, if they can bend their knee, but the foot is at a more severe angle. So like this one, I utilize this black larger sponge here. This is at a pretty steep angle. Um, I'm gonna angle my tube to the foot. So to the angle of the foot, all right? So you're gonna be at a steeper angle there. Um, so you angle to the foot and then you can try and add your 10 degree angle to help penetrate the tarsals. Um, but most of the time in these situations, we just angle to the foot and take it as is. If they can't bend their knee at all, you have to raise the leg up off the stretcher, up off the table. I like those blue rectangle sponges that you use for the stretcher chest to put behind the patient. Raise it up, keep the sponges flat, like flush to their heel almost, so kick it back this way. And then you're either gonna use um, the rolling cassette holder that we have in the ER, or if you're not in the ER, you can utilize some sandbags and use a cassette. Some tape is your friend um, to hold it up. But what you're gonna do is I like this blue sponge. I take the cassette in the holder, angle it to the patient and bring it a little bit below. Make sure your patient is supine for this and not sitting up because otherwise the tube is gonna be right in front of their face. So relax them back on their stretcher, angle your tube to the foot, try and bring this as flush to the foot as you can. I know it's gonna be at a steep angle. Just watch your SID here, don't be too far away. All right. And then your oblique foot, again, evaluate your patient. Can they drop their knee medially into an oblique? Um, if, they can, if they can oblique for you, then just go ahead and do as normal. Um, if they can't rotate, what else can you do? Can you tilt up their hip on the side of interest? Put an angle sponge on their hip. Sometimes when you tilt the hip up, the foot will automatically sort of drop into an oblique position um, for you. If they can't rotate, you can't tilt them up, then you have to choose some options. So you can angle the stretcher, you can angle the cassette, or you angle the tube that 30 to 40 degrees at least to compensate for that. So here's um, an example here. Um, the patient is able to angle their foot, so they were able to oblique it. I left them in that position with the same angle. My tube angle is matching their foot. This patient here couldn't move, so they are using the tube angle to angle the part. Remember, anytime you're using your tube angle, angle the way you want the part to move. 
So you do a medial oblique, so you need to angle that way. This is demonstrating keeping the foot straight, but angling your cassette instead. I don't tend to use that one very often. And this is just another view of how that tube is coming in. The beam is gonna shoot the foot medially. This is gonna distort the part, but on these patients, um, you're just trying to get the best images you can. And if they can't move, then you're just gonna get the radiologist what you can get. So you're gonna, it, it's gonna be slightly distorted, but that's okay. Lateral. Can they roll and do a lateral position um, just like your normal patients can? If they can do that, if they can bend their knee up and drop their leg out to the side, you can do a regular lateral. If they can't go lateral at all, you're gonna use the cross table method um, where you're gonna put a sponge underneath. You wanna raise that part up off, off the table, right? Cassette is gonna go on the inside and you may need to use tape to hold this in place or um, sponges or um, sandbags in between. You want it flush to the foot. Try and dorsiflex that foot just like you normally would. If they can't, you can utilize um, some tape if need be or some um, helping support to try and do that. Just to try and get it as lateral as possible. Okay, and then obviously this is just your regular lateral foot option. Okay. So just be aware of your SIDs on these um, and that you're not too far away. Watch your angles and just see what options are available to you. Really sort of trying to evaluate what your patient can or can't do will be helpful. To use this as a comp, you need to do the angling and you need to do a cross table lateral. If the patient is on a stretcher and can move and angle their foot for you, that's not um, one that we will accept. Okay, good luck with that one.